No matter how much we work to have that perfect balance, usually something comes along that throws us off. And so what you have to do is adjust in life. And that's what I had to do. I had to figure out what to do when my family needed to plan ahead for more income because the economy changed, our financial situation changed, and my motherhood journey had to change. And that's what I'm sharing today in my working mom journey in this episode. I'm Mocha Mom, welcome to Working Mom Warrior, where we help you stop the stress and dump the self-judgment by relating to stories of other moms who share their successes and their failures. I'm sharing my working mom journey in this series. It would seem like starting a business and having it take off would be a success, but it actually turned out to be a failure for me, and I'm gonna explain why. You know, I'm always open to trying different things and learning new things. So I'm in the library and I see this book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I'm like, okay. So I start listening to it and a lot of it is about real estate. And my husband had actually said to me, you know, um, I've heard of other people who like, you know, buy houses and, and rent them out and it's a way to, you know, kind of um, have some extra income. And I'm like, we couldn't do that, you know. You have to be handy to do that. And he's like, well, how do you know I'm not handy? And, and he once told me I was insulting his manhood by telling him he wasn't handy. I'm like, you're great on guitar, but I don't know about fixing things, you know. And so after listening to this book, I realized, okay, you don't have to be this or have to be that. Anybody can get involved in real estate. Actually, you didn't even need a lot of money. You didn't need any money, I learned later. But at the time, um, my husband's job was enough to pay the bills and for the first time in our life, have a little extra left over to put aside in savings. It was such a relief. I remember it was a, it was a couple years of like actually having enough money to pay all the bills where you didn't have to wait to pay them, like you could pay them when they came. And then after you paid them all, there was still this extra money and you could start a savings account. And so we had built up a little money and this book helped me to realize, okay, we could try this thing, you know, like get a rental property and rent it out and see if it would, you know, help with, it really wouldn't be an, enough extra money to like help you like start a savings fund for your kid or something, you know, for college, but it would be something that down the road Road, like for retirement might help us so I said let's give this a try and I dove in and got a bunch of other books and learned as much as I could and we spent like months looking around to learn all kinds of things and get our first property and and I really did most of this myself you know my husband obviously was on the same page and in agreement and he was kind of excited about it but he was very busy with his own life and at that point we had two kids and we did own the house where we were living we had just like two years earlier finally because of you know his good job and the economy and everything was going great and interest rates were low and we were able to buy a house and this was very exciting you know after years of being in debt and and never thinking we would have enough money you know and help from from my dad you know for down payment and you know to fix it up because it was you know it needed some repairs before we could move in so we got a lot of help from a lot of people and learned a ton and and so same thing happened when we got our first rental property and so this was kind of a side thing that I was gonna do and okay so you know I'm I'm doing all these things in my life right I'm, I'm taking care of two kids and I'm real involved in their lives every single day I'm 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 sitting right there with them doing homework and I'm cooking meals every night and I'm not a great cook but I at least wanted to like make you know, fresh, healthy food, tried my best to do that. And I'm, you know, super involved in their activities. I'm like in charge of these certain things and I'm still working my career, but it's only a couple days a week. And I'm, you know, my household is, it's organized in a way I like. It's not super clean, but it's good enough. You know, we keep the toys out of this room. We put everything away at the end of the night. Everything was kind of in balance, right? And so if I take on this this thing of, of having this rental house, okay, so maybe it's an extra couple hours a week you know I really didn't think it would take that much of my time I'm like okay I you know I, I didn't think like is this gonna upset the apple cart as they say is this gonna mess with the balance um, and so we were devoting a lot of times to, to kind of get into it but we could bring the kids along and everything seemed okay so then I decided I want to learn more about this real estate thing so this is all part of my working mom journey because of what happened that that made the whole work-life balance go out of whack. So I 
ended up getting some more books about real estate investing and one was called No Money Down by Robert Allen. The first one, Rich Dad Poor Dad, is by Robert Kiyosaki. So I don't remember if No Money Down was the second one. I know I got the Landlord's Legal Guide to Real Estate and some of these other things, but they weren't audiobooks. And I was just blown away like, oh, okay, another big surprise in my life. You can buy real estate with no money. It's, it's really true. It means basically you don't have any money in savings. You haven't saved anything. It's just all what they call OPM, other people's money. So in our case, we had this house that we had bought and within a couple years, oh my God, housing was just going through the roof, right? <laughs> the bubble was coming, but I didn't know that. I didn't know enough about real estate. I hadn't been in it that long. So it was worth way more in just a few years than it was worth earlier and I was getting all these calls from from mortgage brokers and I didn't know why refinance refinance cash out cash out and so this book helped me to realize what that meant oh so I could get a new loan for this property that was a much higher loan and I would get money that in, in my bank account that wasn't money I had earned it was it was money that was a loan on this house and I would have to pay it back and we didn't make enough to pay it back but if I took that money and used it to buy properties then the tenants would pay the mortgage that would cover that extra home equity line of credit you know it can be it can sound very complicated in some senses it is in some sense is some senses it isn't but I learned a lot from that book and realized that we could do this and the money was flowing freely at that time and and so you know we kind of got in at the right time to get to get the loans not at the right time to buy I didn't know this so we were buying it it's what at what is called wholesale prices we you know we weren't paying what a person would pay who would just be walking in off the street and say I like this house I want to buy it we were buying properties that needed work and were discounted and you know foreclosures or whatever or state sales um, but I kind of went a little crazy because I'm the kind of person that sometimes when I get involved in something I get a lot of energy towards it you might be able to tell that and I ended up like getting nine properties in the course of the next couple years and 11 mortgages to go with them and basically like all of them were purchased with no money that we had it was just all borrowed money they call that leveraged so these properties were basically leveraged to 100% so for instance if you bought a house for 150,000 and the loans that you got maybe one loan here another loan here another loan here, here added up to 150,000 there was no equity in the house but if the if the total of those loan payments was 1200 and the tenant was paying 1400 then your loans were going to be paid and you didn't have to worry and you had a couple hundred dollars extra when there were repairs that came up so that's the way I thought it was going to work but a couple things happened number one I was naive well many things happened when you're feeling like super mom and you could handle everything even as more and more is thrown at you, you have to know when to recognize when it's all too much. And that's what I explain in the next episode of My Working Mom Journey. Check it out. And also, don't forget to spread a little of your own love to another mom who needs it.